This video covers a holiday that myself and Ros had on the Isle of Man in August 2023. This shows our route to the Isle of Man. I was taking the car on the ferry from Liverpool. We could have gone via Haitian but Liverpool seemed the better option for the sailing times. It's just under an hour's drive to Liverpool from our house then we drove onto the Isle of Man steam packet company ship the Manaman and set sail. The outward crossing was uneventful and calm. Here's some views of Liverpool as we left. Rather a grey day. We sailed on the Manannan, which was built in 1998 in Australia, but given a major refit in 2009, and she entered service on the Liverpool to Douglas crossing. She's 96 metres long and can take 850 passengers and crew and 200 vehicles. On arrival at the ferry terminal in Douglas, we disembarked and drove the car to our hotel, the Man Inn, on Douglas Promenade. We drove from Douglas to Laxey and went on a railway to the highest point on the island, Snay Fell, and saw the wheel at Laxey. After lunch we drove to Ramsey via the coast road. We returned from Ramsey to Douglas via the mountain road. We went from Laxey to the summit of Snay Fell on the mountain railway, which is the only electric mountain railway in the British Isles. Snaefell is 2,036 feet high and the journey is 5 miles. Unfortunately when we got to the top it was covered in low cloud so we couldn't see much and took no footage. Here's a shot of a disused mine on the way down. Here's a still of Ros on Snaefell Summit with the Mountain Railway. Further down on the railway we get our first sight of the Laxey Wheel. The Laxey Wheel is the largest surviving water wheel in the world. It's 22 metres diameter, built in 1854 to pump water from the mines nearby. The mines produced lead, copper, silver and zinc and closed in 1929. Here we are inside one of the mines. one of the rivers which powers the Luxy Wheel. Ramsey is the main town in the north of the island. Here we see the beach and the promenade with the town in the distance. Back in Douglas we see a large ferry ship alongside and a cruise liner moored in the bay. It's a busy port with several crossings per day from Liverpool, Haitian and Belfast as well as an occasional cruise ship on longer journeys. We drove to Port Erin. It's pleasant driving throughout the island, light traffic everywhere we went. Our route took us through Port St Mary, a small village popular with tourists and fishermen. On arrival in Port Erin I plugged my Tesla into charge. There are plenty of car charging points on the street in all the towns and villages we stopped in. 
mostly pod points giving 7 to 11 kilowatts. This may not sound like much but in reality you're not driving vast distances in a day and a couple of hours at 7 kilowatts is just about enough. To get a discount of 500 to 1000 pounds off a new Tesla follow the link in the video description. I last visited the island on a school trip 50 years ago and we stayed in Port Erin for a week. It was quite an adventure. Port Erin is a small seaside resort, the largest in the south of the island. There's a, lo there's a lovely beach which is sheltered by the bay. Bradderhead is the high point on the far side. Nigel Mansell lived here for a while to dodge his taxis. It's a short drive from Port Erin to Craigneesh. Most of this village is a living museum and preserved in 19th century style, demonstrating life in a small Manx village at that time. It was one of the last places where the Manx language was routinely spoken. Here's some Loch Tan sheep with four horns and Harry Kelly's cottage, the most famous former resident of the village. At the extreme southwest of the Isle of Man is the Calf Sound and across the sound the Calf of Man, a small uninhabited island. You can go there by boat from Port Erin, it's a bird sanctuary. More views of Douglas Harbour when we got back in the evening. This is the only fairly fast car charger in the whole island, 50 kilowatts. It's another short drive right across the island to Peel. Peel is a small fishing port and resort and formerly the capital of the island when the Vikings ruled here. Another example of how easy it is to charge your EV on this island. Here we see the exterior of Peel Castle which actually stands on St Patrick's Isle which is connected to the town by Causeway. The castle was originally built in the 11th century by Norwegians and extensively rebuilt in the 14th century. There's a watchtower within the castle and the view out north and west towards Scotland and Ireland would have given you a great view of any enemy ships approaching from a long way off. Incidentally, if you are a National Trust member, bring your membership card as this gets you a free admission to a number of attractions in the island including this castle. The town has a pleasant beach and the usual seaside activities. Tinwald is the Isle of Man Parliament. It consists of two chambers in a single building in the centre of Douglas. It claims to have sat continuously for over 1,000 years, the longest run in the world. It originated when the Vikings ruled the island. The first chamber is the House of Keys and contains members elected by the public throughout the island. The upper chamber is the Legis Legislative Council, which is mostly local dignitaries elected by the House of Keys. Final day in Douglas, just before the ferry home, here you see a statue of the Bee Gees who were all born in the Isle of Man, which I didn't know until I saw this. 
And here's the scene in the Douglas Harbour just before we got on our boat to come home. Very rough seas, it was a heavy wind that day. It didn't quite look too bad in the harbour, but it was quite bad when we got out in the bay, Force 8 Gale. That was the end of the holiday.